What's up guys? This video is going to help you remember the basics of the six types of cellular necrosis. Here we have Necrosis Nick sitting in a boat in the backyard and he does not look well. All right, let's jump in with the first type of necrosis. Fibrinoid necrosis is up first. Nick is in a boat, which could also be referred to as a vessel, and the vessel has a big hole in it and is leaking thick pink fibers. Fibers mean fibrinoid. In fibrinoid necrosis, blood vessels leak a protein called fibrin, and it makes vessel walls pink colored and thicker. This could be because of things like hypertension or even antibody deposition on the vessel walls. All right, next we have Cassius necrosis. Nick has a suitcase with him and it looks like, and it looks like there's a block of cheese as well as some cheesy looking goop coming out of it with the initials TB. The suitcase is to remind you of the name Cassius necrosis. The TB stands for tuberculosis, which is a major cause of this. Essentially, macrophages wall off an infection, put it in a case, if you will, and the contents of that walled off infection look like a cheesy substance. All right, next we have gangrenous necrosis. The green tourniquet here is to help you think of the name gangrene, but also that chronic ischemia, lack of blood flow, can cause this. Other factors like diabetes can play a role. The foot is turning into a nice black color, reminding us that this type of necrosis affects the extremities, hands, feet. There's also a wet and a dry gangrene. Dry usually has to do with ischemia. Wet has to do with infections. All right, now we have the next type of necrosis, fat necrosis. Nick has a nice fat belly, which reminds us of the name fat necrosis. He is writing damage on his belly with chalk with some lumps on it, meaning that fat necrosis has a white, lumpy, chalky appearance. It's white because of calcium deposition. The word damage helps us remember that physical damage or even enzymatic damage, like from your pancreas, can cause fat necrosis. All right, next we have coagulative necrosis. Here we have a duck pinching off a hose. Nick's head is just a skull and there's no water coming out. So coagulative necrosis involves ischemic tissue, which means that the blood supply has been cut off. The duck makes a quack sound, right? Quack, 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 coagulative. Might be a stretch, but hey, it'll work. The pinched off hose reminds us of ischemia, so blood supply being cut off. The skull helps us remember that tissue that has coagulative necrosis actually retains its shape even after it's died off. His eyes don't have any pupils or irises. Cells that undergo coagulative necrosis lose their nucleus. Nick has got a nice hole in his head. You can see his brain, some water flowing out. This is for liquefactive necrosis. This is usually seen in the central nervous system. The name kind of gives it away. Tissue turns into a liquid. So if there's an ischemia or, a, or an infection, neutrophils dump their contents and eventually the tissue turns to a liquid, leaving a hole where the tissue used to be. And that's liquefactive necrosis, usually seen in the central nervous system. Necrosis Nick teaching us about all the six types of necrosis, which we have here, a little summary. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Totally believe that. I also believe that it shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg to get the study resources you need. So thanks for watching. Subscribe. And good luck on whenever you need to know this.